Hey, it's Jonathan McHugh. We're back here at the 4th Annual Music Supervisor Guild Awards at the beautiful Max Senate Studios. Lucky enough to sit here with my old friend PJ Bloom, who's nominated tonight for Glee. How you feeling, tough guy? I feel fantastic, man. It's, it's, it's amazing. We uh, sort of hatched this event about four years ago, and every year it increases in popularity. And here we are at Max Senate Studios. We actually shoot American Horror Story here, so it's fun to kind of be in a little bit of my home territory, a little bit of connectivity to what we do. And uh, you can hear the crowd down there. There's a lot of people, and it's people gathering. And it's going to be a it's going to be a legitimate awards event this evening. Very exciting. Yeah, we've stepped it up. We started out at a little brunch in the uh, downtown, moved to the London Hotel last year in a windstorm, and now we are stepping up our game to the uh, fourth annual event. So PJ has been a uh, supervising luminary, shall we say, crushing it with Glee, American Horror Story, nominated tonight. Um, talk about what makes you love music supervising. Um, man, I got to tell you, I'm coming into my uh, coming into my 20th year, which is which is kind of unbelievable to me, because um, I still feel like a young guy. But you know, I think I think like all of us who get involved in this industry, I'm just a music fanatic. I have this voracious appetite for it, and and honestly, I didn't even know there was a business in soundtracks. I didn't know there was a business called music supervision. And you know, when I discovered it, and I realized that you could there's this job where you could have one foot in music and one foot in the visual medium. It was done for me. It was all over. And then I did everything I could to kind of stay a part of it. Ultimately, I figured out that I had a skill set for it. And it's just amazing to me. I mean, I think for those of us involved and for, for the audience sitting there in the movie theater or watching on television, you know that a song can change the way you see something. It can change how you feel. It can change, you know, you know everything about the visual medium. So the fact that I get to get to be part of it, the collective creative process, manipulate music, manipulate the visual medium in that way, it's just I can't imagine doing a better job. Yeah, it's really fun. And some supervisors have been able to do other things. Some have become composers like Tom and Manish who do girls. I've been lucky enough to direct films, and I mean direct produce films, and now I'm directing my first film. PJ is a, a great story because he's had great success in the, in the record business. He, uh, he found a band and they basically got inv invested in him. So talk about, and, and now he has a huge hit song, so talk about a little bit about how you've been able to parlay your craft into bringing great music into the world uh, on the record side. Well, I, th I think one of the greatest things about the career of music supervision is that is that we touch all aspects of the industry. You know, we certainly do the creative part, but we, 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 we are well versed in music publishing, in, in record industry, in record company culture, uh, agentry, management, how the money flows, and, and that's just one discipline. There's the whole other discipline on the production side, but you really get this sort of well-rounded understanding of the entire music business. And, and the way I kind of describe it is, you know, in, in a lot of these in a lot of these fields, you're really just kind of doing one thing, and you're you're on the check you're on the chessboard looking through the chess pieces. I think as a music supervisor, you really get this opportunity to stand above the chessboard and see how the pieces move. And when you when you do that, you can really understand and ultimately manipulate the industry. For good, of course, not for good. In the most positive of all ways. In the most positive way. Um, so, you know, as a music supervisor, we are really in the service industry. We're here to serve directors, we're here to serve producers, we're here to stu serve the studios and the networks who hire us. And, you know, I, I, I kind of felt that, that, you know, about five, six years ago that I really wanted to get into the asset side. I love music supervision, but I want to own something. You know, in, in, in our position, you know, I, I do well, we do well, my peers do well, but at the same time, the people that we're that we're helping, the major record companies, the artists, the publishers, the songwriters, they're doing really well. So I, you know, I kind of felt like I wanted to grab a little piece of that. So I started signing bands. Uh, the first band I signed was uh, was Far East Movement. I signed them to a publishing deal. We had a huge hit with Like a G6. Went on to went on to sell about about 15 million uh, singles worldwide, which is amazing. And then just recently, I signed a Great Big World, who currently has a, a major hit with Say Something. Uh, we had, we are just hit our three million singles mark today. Amazing! Congratulations. Thank you very much. And this 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 came from a pitch. My good friend Gary Miller at Universal Music Publishing. They had signed this band to uh, to a very low impact administration deal. He was kind of just testing the waters to see if music supervisors were interested in it. He sent me this song. I said, "This is one of the best songs I've heard in a long, long time." My first question was, "Who's got the master?" And the answer was, "I believe it's available." So my next question was. 
who's the manager, <laughs> and how can and let I me get his ass on the phone right now. Her, how can I get in touch with her? So uh, I, I, gave, I gave her a shout, and uh, we went and had a couple cocktails. Uh, ultimately, we were able to, uh, I was able to sign them to my to my record label, Black Magnetic, um, to a very small independent deal. Uh, we did a few things. I helped them at sync. We put the song, we put one of their songs on Glee. We were able to get some traction, and and. What I found is that once you get traction with a band in this industry, that's when all the major labels start start sniffing around, right? There's not a lot of artist development in the major label system right now. They like to uh, they like to jump on a moving train. So I was able to sort of take this take this project from a standing start to uh, to uh, you know kind of making its way down the tracks. At that point, everybody started sniffing around, and, and L.A. Reid and and Epic Records was ultimately the best suitor. And uh, it's just been an amazing experience. And once Epic Records take o t took over, they were able to take this thing to the stratosphere. So we're at three million right now. It's going to be, they're going to be a career band. I'm so proud of these guys. Just an amazing experience. Yeah, shout out to L.A. Reid for having the balls to step up. One of the best ears in the business, always has and always will. So, uh, PJ Bloom, good luck tonight, and I uh, hope you pick up a, tra a statue. Thank you, Johnny Mac. I've been, a, I've been a bridesmaid for about three years now, so I'd love to bring one home. But either way, I'm just glad to be here. Susan Lucci, day. you or not, baby. You'll be picking up. Thanks, everyone. For more Q-Score, please check us out at EmpowerMe.TV to find out what goes on behind the curtain and how the film and TV music gets made. It happens right here. Tune in.